For 2022, Samsung adjusted its flagship offering. The Samsung S22 range has a regular and plus model, as well as the Note replacing Galaxy S22 Ultra with the S Pen. The middle of those three is the S22 Plus, which for all intents and purposes is just a bigger S22. So can it deliver that flagship experience, or is it just a bit meh? I'm Cam Bunsen from Pocketlint, and this is our review. And while you're here, if you do like it, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more design. And sometimes you have to go back to go forwards. After a spate of handsets expanding their scales and bending their screen edges to create extremes, the S22 Plus shuns that way of thinking. That's because this Plus model is actually a little minus compared to its S21 Plus predecessor shrinking the screen size from 6.7 to 6.6 .6 inches. That panel size and the fact it's a flat screen here should give the Plus model immediate appeal to those who want a sensible balance of scale. But more importantly than the panel size reduction, however, is the squishing of the physical dimensions by a few millimeters here and there compared to its predecessor. As bezels go, there aren't any phones to our knowledge that have managed to fit in such skinny bezels with a completely flat screen. And they're impressively even all the way around. It's an impressive feat of engineering, and the closest thing to an edge-to-edge -edge flat screen we've seen for a long time. Otherwise, in terms of design, you could look at the S22 Plus and assume it was the S21 Plus, albeit a whisker smaller. However, that doesn't mean the same plastic rear as before, it's glass this time around, right across the range. Now there is a bit of an edge all the way around the screen, which might mean it's not quite as comfortable as some other Android offerings. At least, less comfortable than something that has curved glass on the back. It's much more iPhone-like in its approach with its completely flat front and back. However, the slightly curved aluminium frame will help it feel a tad more comfortable than it would with right angles and completely flat edges. Now onto the display, and we've handled all manner of phones over the past few years, all experimenting with different aspect ratios, curves, flat screens, all of the above. But the S22 Plus seems like a voice of reason in among all that testing and experimentation over the years. It's like a handset that says, hey, this just works, delivering a flat panel, fast refresh rate, and a scale that's large but manageable in one hand without needing an overly long aspect ratio to counter for anything. That said, the S21 FE hasn't long been available, offering a 6.4 inch panel, so if you're after something a tad smaller without venturing down to the base S22, there could be appeal there as well. Now, if you're looking for something even bigger still, then we wouldn't rule out the S22 Ultra, which has a larger screen, but also curves it at the edges, so it does feel rather different. But flat isn't the word that we would use to describe the visual experience offered by the S22 Plus even if it is a bit more boxy in its feel. The use of AMOLED display technology and a decent resolution ensure the delivery of punchy colors and crisp detail. That said, there are no additional pixels here to compensate for the larger screen real estate, compared to the base S22. Having handled all three S22 models, however, we can confidently say you won't look at any and think that they lack. Samsung hasn't gone completely overboard when it comes to refresh rates either, offering a dynamic 120Hz screen so it can automatically adjust whether it's refreshing that screen 10 times a second or up to 120. So it refreshes at different rates if you're watching videos or reading an article, for instance. Samsung does tend to sit on the bright side, which means content looks great, but this does have a little bit of an impact on battery life. It's easy to knock down a bit manually, but we frequently looked at the phone first thing in the morning and thought it was just too bright automatically. It certainly doesn't adapt as naturally and quickly and smoothly as the likes of the OnePlus 10 Pro or, or the Find X5 Pro from Oppo, which have really smooth gradual dimming. Now, since we've just mentioned battery life, let's just move straight there. The 4,500 milliamp hour cell on board here has slimmed down a little from previous years. Now, Samsung is convinced that the optimization of this device counters the slight shrinkage, but there are plenty of devices of this size with larger batteries. In practice, you'll find that it performs well enough and it'll get you through a day without causing any concerns, as long as you're not hammering it with Call of Duty Mobile all the time, of course. Again, performance isn't quite as good as similar capacity batteries we've seen in smartphones from Oppo, Xiaomi or OnePlus, but it's good enough. With two or three hours of light usage each day, we'd often get to the bedtime with about 40 or 50% left over. But as soon as we start gaming or using the camera, that drains the battery a lot more significantly. There's charging to consider too. There's support for 45 watt wire charging and 15 watt wireless charging, but there's no charger in the box. 
Is that a big deal? Well, that's a divisive issue. Some other manufacturers like to include chargers in the box. Samsung and Apple don't. And moving on to general speed and performance, the Samsung has deployed its own Exynos 2200 processor in the S22 series in all but the USA and China. These regions get Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 instead, that's no surprise. Samsung's been doing this for years, and every year there's an argument about which is best. The usual consensus being that the Snapdragon model is usually better, but there are very few practical differences. The Exynos 2200 in our review sample has been smooth and fast, delivers a flagship experience, but not with any real noticeable difference from the last generation. They may be faster on paper and in benchmarks, but in practical terms, the experience is very close. In terms of software, you'll find Google's Android 12 operating system with Samsung's One UI 4.1 interface over the top. Samsung is also promising four generations of updates for the software, so you can buy the S22 safe in the knowledge that it will serve you for at least its expected term, with all the latest security and features through updates. That means the experience here is essentially the same as the other S22 devices, as well as the S21 devices, which have also been updated. Samsung software remains one of the largest reworkings of Android, and there's loads on offer here. But there is room for improvement. The apps tray that opens vertically and then scrolls horizontally is an affront to logic, and Samsung's duplication of apps remains, even when there's no benefit. The Samsung keyboard and browser too just seem like a barrier to progress. It's time to move on, Samsung. On to cameras, and the S22 and S22 Plus are no different here. Both have triple camera systems. The Plus asserts its flagship nature in the cameras department by including a proper zoom lens, and foregoing any of that throwaway stuff that so many manufacturers seem to be plonking into phones these days, so there are no nonsense low resolution macro or depth sensors to find here. Instead, Samsung keeps it fairly straightforward by offering a main camera, an ultra wide, and a zoom. That's the same arrangement in the earlier S21 Plus, but with a slightly different resolution. In all truth though, the experience hasn't changed a huge amount. It hasn't really changed much from the S21 Plus, really. The S22 Plus still produces great images, and in classic Samsung style there's some bumping of saturation to make skies bluer and greenery greener, but generally speaking it's easy to get great looking photos with whichever camera you're using, and the colours and balance between those three cameras are closer than they've been before so they all look like they belong together. The ultra-wide is great, and the zoom will offer that three times optical and holds on to details as you zoom in a little. Samsung talks up night mode on this phone and it will indeed turn night into day. But that isn't the party trick it used to be, with many offering similar performance at this level. The front camera is decent for selfies, taking warm and natural selfies in daylight, but it can be a little noisy in the shadows, especially with low light. The big appeal for us is how straightforward everything is. Pick up the S22 Plus, quickly load the camera app, point, pinch, tap, zoom, just shoot it how you want. There's optical stabilization in the right places, decent autofocus, and a night mode that will automatically kick in as needed without you needing to think. It's just more cohesive than many out there, although the likes of Google's Pixel 6 Pro and Pixel 6 will more than put Samsung to task. In the end, there are no massive changes from the S21 series to the S22, and many might find there's little reason to upgrade. It's much the same design, much the same experience, but slightly tweaked. It also suffers from sitting in the shadow of the newly refreshed S22 Ultra. At its core, the S22 Plus is a great phone with great display quality, great audio, and a good camera system. It's smooth to use and the battery life lasts well enough, but you could get much the same experience from the cheaper S21 FE or last year's S21 Plus, which is now available for less than it was a year ago. So yes, it's a great phone, but you can save money and not lose out too much if you want to. I've been Cam, let me know what you think of the S22 series this year in the comments below or get me on Twitter, I'm at Cam Bunton. If you did like this review, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.